Now this one, I've been waiting a while for. Hello, I am Chris, AKA Plastic, and welcome to the Pocket Legion. Once in a while, the collecting gods look favorably upon me, and on this occasion, I managed to find a $600 console for less than 50 bucks. Let's take a look at the Alltech Color Vision. A couple of years ago, I bought two cartridges on eBay for the Color Vision Master Unit. So these guys set me back about $30. I'd never seen a Color Vision Master Unit, but I did know it was a handheld, and I'd never seen one for sale. So, in recent years, well, recent months, a couple have come up for sale on eBay, and I had no idea what they were, uh, other than they had Alltech as a brand, and in some cases, Bristol, and they sold for extraordinary amounts of money, secondhand and broken. Um, so this guy comes from 1982, um, and he's made of the types of materials you'd imagine 1982 handheld games consoles are made from. It's super light, it has a mirror here. This is where the games go in, up at the top. Um, kind of modeled around one of the tabletops actually at the time, so it's got a nice little joystick. Uh, her and ACL, uh, so I think that's clear and hour, uh, tier and so, so I imagine that's jump and fire, um, and underneath we have some instructions about setting the time, inserting the cartridge, and what to do if the display, if the display becomes dim or erratic, try new batteries. Thanks for that, friends. Okay. And there we go, two C cells. On coof there, I'm matching. Right. Okay, so you can probably hear it's pretty light and I had no idea what to expect. But I'd only seen these guys broken and like I say, for horrific amounts of money, around 425 to $600 a piece. Um, anyway, that's a little bit rich for my taste. Anyway, recently I was searching through a forum and I saw a listing under Beast's Planet and I ordered it and it was $46 and when it arrived this Beast Planet's cartridge was attached to an Alltech color vision that to my surprise worked beautifully. So, let's take a look. It's kind of an unusual console. So, like I say, 1982. The cartridges have a, a light window at the top there and an LCD screen underneath with the game built into them. You insert them into the top of the console here. And you can probably see the game has populated already on the screen. I think we're going to need to move our lights. There we go, let's try that. So the light is now shining in the top here, as you can see. And we can see our beast planet. Now, unusually, this console has no on or off button and the joystick is really loose. Uh, but if we do hit the ACL button, is it going to do something? Yep, yeah, we have a game. Now these basically are all in the same vein as a game and watch type affair. We have like a super long screen and usually something going on now. In this case there are beasts at the top and you have to fire up and hit them. But it's surprisingly effective for what it is. Now, we have a couple of other games, because these had sat around for some time. We have Horror House, and we have Submarine. Let's take a look at these. So, <laughs> box 
Aquas is really nice. It has scan lines on it. I don't know why they introduced a visual artifact to the graphics on the front of the box because, of course, this has no scan lines. It doesn't scan. Uh, submarine. Control the submarine to shoot down as many jet fighters and destroyers as possible while avoiding invading torpedoes. Yeah, that is a district, uh, description and a half for use with the Colorvision Master Unit. So like I say, this was brought out in a number of different places under another number of different guises. Uh, this game released in 1984. Um, so we see we have our exploded submarine, recharging base, submarine, missile, destroyer, jet fighter, number of missiles, torpedo and score. In fact, the exact same layout as Beast's Planet. Um, other games that were available to us we can see up here, Monster Chase. Ah, Monster Chase, that's unusual because look, it's a widescreen game. I wonder what that one was. Um, Horror House, uh, Jungle Boy, and Beast's Planet. So I believe they were the four games that came out for this. Now, unfortunately, Horror House has perished. The LCD screen is no more, even though that had never been out of the box, which is a real shame. Put that one to the side. So the games come packaged really nicely in a neat little polystyrene box. And there's some instructions. ACL, clear the memory, set the time according to the instructions for the master unit. Okay, you can put it in clock mode as well. So I think these were basically supposed to be stored with a cartridge in at least. Okay, you see if I just tip that up now, you can see the game inside here, but let's pop it back in. The game instantly appears. So actually a very similar principle to displaying the graphics as a uh, Tobitronic 3D. Uh, okay, and let's hit the ACL button and the start button. And we're away again, so. Yes. So, yeah, the combination of a fairly loose joystick and a very stiff fire button makes for fairly unpredictable gameplay. But still, not bad. And definitely better than a lot of tabletop games of the time. My friend. It is time for you to be judged. Yes. Hello Vision, you are not going to fit in the pocket of judgment. You are a beautiful tabletop. You won't fit in my pocket. You'll need to go in a sturdy bag. I think you're gonna get a pocket legion rating of Beast's Planet. Thanks for watching. Today's game is Day of the Tentacle. Get your point and click adventure on and save the universe from the tentacles. Please do like, share and tell a friend. Click the subscribe button and make sure you check out our Instagram and Facebook page. We've got a really special review coming up soon from Pseudomod. And until next time, keep your pockets packed.